So in the last video you saw we having a bit of a film photography bonanza shooting four different cameras in three different locations um, just by chance really and I said to you in the last in the last video at the end um, I'll show you guys how I made these prints so that's what this video is going to be about. Let's jump straight into it, look at the negatives, get in the dark room and I'll show you how I made these prints. <laughs> first two photographs that I took, remember the boathouse, that was the first one I took, it's the other way around at the moment because I've got the negatives flipped, um, uh, the emulsion, this is the emulsion side up, and this is the first, first one I took, second one I took, the second one, not quite sure what happened with the exposure, you can see it looks, um, <laughs> looks a bit overexposed, I did an average reading, I took one up the sky at the brightest part, one down here at the sea, um, at the or the creek at the uh, darkest part and he did an average that's how I come up with that metering but this one here I did a spot meter and uh, come down a couple of stops like I said this one's come out really nice I've got bags of tone going on that's going to make a really nice print I'd say uh, you might think that might be quite dark but um, these is, this is all quite salvageable under the enlarger which I'll go for in a moment but this one um, a bit overexposed but never mind this is still salvageable as well and I'm not quite sure what happened with me framing on on this one here you can see it's a little tiny bit wonky when you look at the rebate especially at the top there a little tiny bit wonky I'll put that wonky inside the um, inside the negative carrier and then on to the two pinhole photographs I took this one's come out really nice on pinhole it will be naturally soft because it's you know pinhole photography but this one's come out really nice um, I've got some strange stuff going on on the top of this negative there see that I'm not sure what that is I don't know if it's a light leak or some developing problem I don't know um, never mind I can still make a nice print with that these are nice negs anyway I'm just beating around a bush with them really and this one's come out quite nice look at those clouds look really nice I I'm not sure what's going on here I think this is my fingertips inside the dark changing bag when I was uh, putting this into the holder I had a little bit of trouble trying to get this uh, one of these in and I think this is possibly the one there see it there not sure what that is, but um, nothing a little crop can't do. And these are the 35mm eggs uh, from the Olympus OM20. I developed these in ID11 at stock, so I didn't use a pyro for this one. Um, I used ID11 to develop these, and they look really nice. So this is the Intrepid Enlarger that I was out with today, and there's an attachment you can get with it, which you can see here, this brown-looking uh, attachment. Underneath that, it's got a light, a little LED light, a panel I should say, diffuser panel, and that just goes into the Graphlox lock, graphics, gra whatever it's called, the lock, you know what I'm talking about, goes inside this lock, sits on top of the camera, anyway, <laughs> and the light comes down through the lens, and that's where we get our projection, the negative is sitting already there, comfortable, in this little uh, 4x5 negative carrier, and I'm using exactly the same lens as I was using out in the field. There's no reason for that. This is the lens that I use, this 105mm lens that I use for making enlargements using this setup. It is a little bit fiddly trying to get the legs and stuff and trying to get it all set up and straight. But once it's all straight, you know, I can then just spend a whole afternoon or, or evening or wherever, a whole day if I like, printing out my 4x5 legs. Then I'll pack all this away and come back another time if I want to make some more 4x5 four, four prints. And this is the funky little timer that comes with it. Again, it's wooden, being intrepid. Um, so it's got all the functions there. That's light on, light off. That's start the timer. That's up the seconds, one second. And you can go in uh, increments of tenth of a second. So it's pretty cool. So this is the tripod. It's a KNF tripod that I'm using. It's got this boom pole on it, an attachment. So that's really handy for this sort of this sort of setup other than that you'll have to use a copy stand or some funky gadget that you've made yourself but this is what i use just my regular tripod uh, got the boom arm extended and uh, off we go and this is the paper i'm going to be using ilford's multi-grade rc deluxe glossy paper and that's nine and a half inches by 12 and i've also got exactly the same paper in a smaller format and i get this this is for my test strip so i don't have to waste my big paper by cutting it up I can use this for small prints, also test strips for this stuff. It has to be exactly the same. So I'm all set up and ready to go. I'm all tickety-boo. I can't wait to make some prints and see how this comes out. I'm a little bit worried about the negative because I had some strange things going on with it. Um, but that don't matter. It's just fun and I'm enjoying myself taking photographs, making prints and uh, seeing how they come out and learning from it at the same time. 
So on this DSLR video recorder that I've got, um, I've upped the ISO to 6400 so you guys can see what I'm seeing on the baseboard there. So there's my negative, that's the pinhole shot of the shed. Uh, the second one I took, which was on the boats, that's the one I'm going to make a print of because I think that gives more impact than the other one, which was too wide, just left nothing really uh, to the imagination. So this is one I'm going to uh, make some test strips on and see how we get on with it first of all. And I've already done a focus finder on it. The grain is so fine with that T-Max 400 and the 510 Pyro. The grain is very fine, so it was a bit tricky try trying to get some focus on it, but I think I'm there. So we're just going to do my test strip, place a piece of 5x7 underneath and do increments of one second. Knocking everything over now, all the way along. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The only thing I forgot to do with all this chatting, I've left my um, aperture open at 5.6. Oh well, let's see how that looks at. 5.6, so I usually shut it down a couple of stops. So this is just my test, test strip to see how long my projection needs to be when I put a piece of paper underneath. That's actually coming out quite nice. So test strips come out quite nice, soft like I said, as pinhole generally is, but that is the characteristics of pinhole photography. If you don't like the softness, don't shoot pinhole. I like it. I think it's uh, unique to its own own style, if you like. Um, it is pinhole photography. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. Look at that. I've got cloud. I've got bags of detail. I was bang on with the um, exposure there. Six seconds. Let's print it. Six seconds and I'll stay dead still because I've got wooden floorboards. I don't want nothing wobbling, so I'll stay dead still, still as I'm doing this. Off it goes, six seconds. Done, let's develop it. Just starting to come through now, look at that. Okay, that's done, into the stop bath, into the fix, into the wash. The only thing is I've got that strange, looks like a light leak or something at the top. Um, maybe it is a light leak, I don't know. But I do like this print, so I might have to just crop that in and get as much of the negative as possible without the leak. The sky looks really nice on this. Oh wow, so that has come out far better than I imagined. Unfortunately, I've just got that dark little area up here. I'm sure that's a light leak of somehow. I must have loaded it in the camera wrong, I don't know. That's okay, I can crop that, but I've got this little bloody hair sitting there. So I need to take the negative out and then crop in. So a little bit more setting up to do. Other than that, it ain't bad, that size negative. Look, I've got no dust or no crap on it at all. I'm really happy with that. So that's the second print I've cropped in and it just doesn't look as nice as it did before. I can't help but think the first framing was, was really nice. I had lots of foreground going on and it just all suited well. I've cropped in and it just doesn't work as well for me, unfortunately. Um, but this was, uh, the last one was only seven seconds. This one was 15 seconds because I raised the enlarger up more to crop in, but um, all is not lost. That negative I've still got there, I can scan that, I can Photoshop it. If I wanna do an inkjet print of it, I can. But uh, this is the best I can do with a wet print. But in all fairness, it still looks nice and it's quite a nice composition. I think I nailed in that pinhole and uh, the exposure as well. The print's actually quite nice. Just picking holes in it. So 
So finally, after a couple of attempts, I managed to uh, get the print that I like. This is a contrast fire filter for 14 seconds, quite a long time. And I took the contrast filter away, and then all I did then was just uh, freehand, just burn that in with white light as we went along for probably about five or six seconds or so just to get those clouds popping and i'm quite happy with it it's come out the detail is in the shed the detail here i've got uh, the water isn't muddy which i didn't want the water's not muddy and the clouds are all um, tickety boo also these little tiny boats in the background it's all very sharp So like I showed you earlier on in the dark room, I did some uh, burning on the sky on this print to try and make it work and it came out all right, I quite like it. The other one that I tried, which was the 35mm, there was just too much grain going on in the sky, enlarged, and it was overexposed as well. So I was trying to get that back by burning in. The more I burned in, the more grain I was introducing into the sky and it started to look a little bit ugly. So I decided to just do a little tiny bit and uh, just pretty, pretty much you just about see a little bit of a cloud there but that was just an experiment for me to see how these two the large format and 35 mil held up together side by side obviously we're going to see a difference with the 4x5 it's a bigger negative but the 35 mil uh, negative still held up well at that size and like i said in the previous video if you looked at it from a meter or so or normal viewing distance on a wall it ain't a matter at all you're not going to really see it but of course, if you're going to go for much bigger prints, medium format or 4x5 is definitely the way to go. Saying that, I've had some great 35mm negatives printed up to anything up to 18 inches. If you get close, you can see it, but you just pull yourself back on the wall like normal. Can't really see it. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching this one. All you darkroom users, if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>